properties of substance. We have several classification of properties. They can be intensive properties or extensive properties. Intensive properties do not depend on a sample size or mass. Example of this includes boiling point, state of matter, and density. While extensive properties depend on the amount of matter in the sample. Example of this includes size, mass, and volume. To elaborate more, when we get a sample of a substance at a small amount, its density, boiling point, and state of matter is the same with large amount of that substance. However, its size, mass, and volume is different. Physical properties of matter are any properties that can be perceived or observed without changing the chemical identity of the sample. While chemical properties are those that only be observed and measured by performing a chemical reaction, thus changing the molecular structure of the sample. So the distinction between these two physical properties has no, uh, we conduct an experiment that has no changing its chemical identity. While in chemical properties, you have to take note, a change in molecular structure occur. Let's say you get the property of a substance by simply, um, let's say, melting this one or freezing the substance. So the chemical composition or structure has not changed. Therefore, you are measuring for physical properties. However, if you have that certain substance, you have to warm or put it in a flame and a chemical or molecular structure change occurs. Therefore, you are conducting an experiment where chemical properties are the one you want to know. Density. Density is a physical property. Also, it is an intensive property. It is the ratio of mass to volume. Note that even though mass and volume are extensive properties, the ratio of this is intensive. Sample problem. We have a glycerol in a viscous, viscous liquid used by both the pharmaceutical and food industries as a sweetener, thickener, and stabilizer. To determine its density, a student delivers a 15 milliliter sample by pipe into a plus with a mass of 28.45 grams. The mass of the plus and glycerol sample is 47.37 grams. What is the density of the glycerol? Okay, so first let's take note of the given. We have 15 milliliter sample of glycerol. We have 28.45 grams of plus 
and we have 47.37 grams of plus and glycerol to solve for density we know that density is equal to mass of the substance over volume of the substance so we already have here 15 milliliter which is the volume of, of the glycerol or the substance. Now, you must identify the mass of glycerol. Solve that. We have to subtract 47.37, the combined mass of plus and glycerol with the mass of the plus. Therefore, the mass of glycerol is 18.92 Grams. Now we have volume, glycerol, and mass of the glycerol. We can solve now for density. So density is equal to mass, which is 18.92 grams per 15 milliliter. Solve that, and therefore we have density is equal to 1.26 gram per milliliter. Let's test your understanding. Ay, wala palang problem sample. Okay, let's, so let's go on the next properties, which is solubility. Solubility is referred to as the process by which a solute dissolved in a solvent and is ordinarily a physical rather than a chemical change. Sample problem. Sucrose is a chemical name for the sugar we consume. Its solubility at 20 degrees Celsius is 200 per gram per 100 gram water. And at 100 degrees Celsius is 487 gram per 100 gram water. A solution is prepared by mixing 139 gram of, water, of sugar in 33 grams of water at 100 degrees Celsius. What is the minimum amount of water required to dissolve the sugar at 100 degrees Celsius? Okay. So we are looking for the minimum amount of water to dissolve 139 gram of sugar or sucrose at 100 degree Celsius. So mass of water required is equal to 139 gram of sucrose, which is need to be dissolved 
at 100 degrees Celsius. So let's multiply this one with the solubility factor at 100 degrees Celsius, which is 407 grams per 100 grams of water. So we have to eliminate the unit gram. So let's multiply this one by 100 gram of water over 487 gram of sucrose. So now we can cancel gram. Therefore, the mass required to dissolve 139 grams of sucrose is 28.5 gram of H2O. So let's test your understanding from the previous problem. What is the maximum amount of sugar that can be dissolved in the water at 100 degrees Celsius? The solution is cold to 20 degrees Celsius. How much sugar, if any, will crystallize out? So again, your answer must be comment in this post.